Greetings all, it's the Devious Monkey here. Okay, it is eye doctor appointment time, but I'm really early. So I'm just sitting in the parking lot, killing some time. But what I wanted to talk about was the joys of technology. Now, if you've been following me and you've watched any of my videos, or you just go through my video list and look at some of the titles, you can see that I have a love-hate relationship with technology. It's a blessing and a curse pretty much for everybody, but definitely for me. If there is a weird anomaly, some kind of strange one-off problem, I'm going to encounter it. It adds to the hilarity of my channel because a lot of people say that I should actually do my channel strictly on me flipping out when I run into problems with, with gear. Probably not a bad idea since I'm constantly running into problems with gear. Probably seven out of 10 times, it is literally because I'm a dumbass. Dumb monkey does something dumb or doesn't do something that he's supposed to do and it turns to shit. Let the hilarity ensue. But the reason that I'm bringing up this technology is that I had meetings scheduled for today. I had canceled my doctor's appointment, my eye appointment, because I wasn't going to be back in time from my route, which took me up to, you know, Jersey, Philly, Delaware, and all that kind of stuff. But because of the forecast, I decided not to go good thing since as you saw in yesterday's video you know i avoided being trapped on the freaking interstate for 24 hours you know in an ice and snowstorm what i had done was the day before i switched my meetings from in person to virtual meetings and we did them on microsoft teams i just had my last meeting for the day in the forerunner while i was driving to this eye doctor's appointment basically i was talking to you know one of my dealers from new jersey you know when i stopped to think about it I'm just, I'm blown away and I'm amazed at the technology that I guarantee you many people take for granted. Cell phones. Like when I got my first cell phone, I was still a, a deep sea diver in the Navy. And this was at the beginning of personal cell phones. So we had, we had those big like pack phones, cell phones that we used to take and, and we had it, you know, we used to mount them on the dive boats so that we had, a, you know, a form of communication to call to and from, from our, our, you know, home base, so to speak, they were gigantic. And I remember I bought my first personal cell phone and, and it was, it was like a, you know, almost like a gigantic wedge and you had to pull the antenna out and everything and you had to talk and it was strictly analog and it was super expensive. And one time when I was out on the dive boat and we were doing a dive, I had my cell phone with me all the time in my, you know, in my backpack. And one of the divers used my backpack as a, as a pillow, basically. And so when his head went back on it, he made a call. I think it was like a three and a half hour phone call that it was basically just, you know, I don't even know who the hell it called, but it basically just kept going and it had all of what we were doing on dive station in the background. And it ended up costing me like, I was like $1,200. And I got the bill and of course I almost passed out and I called them and I was like, look, this was a mistake. And I explained to them what happened. Thank Zeus. They were like, okay, clearly this, this was a mistake. So we're gonna, we're gonna take it off your bill. That's how it was back then. Like you had to pay a lot of money to use a cell phone. Not to mention you had to pay a lot of money to buy a cell phone. Now, in retrospect, it, it wasn't nearly as expensive as the shit we've got today. I mean, the, the thought of spending, you know, $1,700 on a cell phone back then was just ludicrous. And I remember I spent 700 on, on uh, a phone that, that you turned it sideways and you slid and it, and it slid up like that. And then it had a keyboard because I had to have a keyboard. And you know, that, that was $750. And, and I had to really, really dig deep down inside to see if I wanted to pay that kind of money. Now, you know, I'm freaking getting devices all the time that are three times that, and I don't bat an eye. It's come a long way since then. You know, back then you had to pay for your minutes your local minutes. And there was a very small area considered local. And then outside of that, you had to pay roaming fees. And then you had to pay for long distance. And there was a difference between day and night and weekend minutes. So there's all this crazy shit that you had to think about that you don't think about today. Today, you just, boom, you, you pay a hundred bucks 
for the month and you get unlimited talk time, doesn't matter who you call, you get unlimited data, you, you know, you get all this crap that, that is like crazy. Again, you just don't think about it. You take it for granted that you have it. I can talk to anybody anywhere pretty much in the world, at least anywhere that I need to call, for pennies. And it almost always works. Now, I do have a couple of areas because, I mean, I'm all along the coast and I go in a little ways. There are some places where I just don't get signal. Now, I have two different services. I have Verizon for my personal stuff, but I have AT&T for my work stuff. Usually one or the other will always be available to me, but I do have dark spots and I'm convinced it's like a government conspiracy and they've got like UFOs hidden in that area. And there's a dead space for like a half an hour where none of my devices will work. I will get absolutely no signal on any iPad or phone the entire time I'm driving. That's kind of weird. And that's why I had a CB installed so that I always have some form of communication with the outside world. Kind of going off topic there. The point is, is that the technology that exists today is amazing. And most people don't realize how amazing it is and they take it for granted. So here I am driving in my Forerunner on the way to an eye doctor's appointment with an iPad that I have plugged into my power in the Forerunner. And then I have a cable that plugs into my stereo system within the vehicle so now I can hear and I can talk through the stereo and it's super clear and I'm having a discussion with a client in New Jersey you know because I couldn't drive up there and I handled my meeting and we had a great meeting and everything was great and I that just it just bewilders me how many apps do you have on your phone that do all these amazing things that five years ago you couldn't do ten years ago unheard of it, it's just amazing when I have my little freakouts about technology and I say, you know, technology is a blessing and a curse, like don't even get me started on HP printers. But for the most part, everything is just, yes, they're gonna be hiccups, but when you think about it, how many people have a cell phone? Do you know anybody that doesn't have a cell phone? Think about all the devices that you have in your home. I mean, if you walked into my house, you'd probably shit yourself if you saw how much crap I have hooked up and running in that house on both floors the garage, the vehicles. I mean, it's, it's insane how, how crazy, but we all know that I'm excessive. So I'm a little bit maybe above the norm, but the point being is there's so much technology going on there just in my house. And I'm one person out of millions, hundreds of millions of people just in this country now go around the globe and imagine how much technology is running at any given second of a day all around the, the, the entire globe. You know, and you get pissed off when, you know, you got you to gotta call back or, or if a call doesn't go through or a call drops or something like that. In the grand scheme of things, holy shit, man, you're calling around the world and you're pissed off because you dropped a call. It's amazing that it happens at all, you know? So I don't know. That's kind of where I'm at with the whole technology is a blessing and a curse. The curse part is kind of a joke, then, and that's just because I'm anal retentive and I get pissy when shit doesn't happen immediately. But I do appreciate the technology that exists today. And, you know, when people say, oh, I, I was born at the wrong time, I should have been born in, the, in this time. Nope, I'm at the exact right place in time. Everything about the world today fascinates me, invigorates me, and excites me, and I couldn't be happier with that. And that's all I wanted to talk about. Something simple while I'm sitting here, but I do have to go in now and, and get my papers checked so I can get some new glasses and I can actually see for a change. All right, so that actually was a good appointment. Uh, I really liked the doctor. She was very thorough. Actually pointed me in a kind of a different direction. Now, I have been using progressive lens glasses since I realized I was getting old and I can't see shit. And the glasses are the glasses. I mean, they're fine. I've, I've changed things up a little bit over, over the past three, three pair, trying different things out. Ultimately, though, having anything on my head obviously gets really annoying. And I've never really gotten used to that. And sometimes I just suffer through it. This time, I think I got the right frame to, to alleviate a lot of that compared to what I've been using. And at least I'm hoping. But I had explained to her that, that I had been wearing contacts and it just didn't work for me. And she's like, what do you mean? And I said, well, I just never felt like my eyes were on the same page at the same time because they had mul what they call multifocal. So it's a progressive lens for contacts. And I just, I just constantly spent the day blinking a thousand times trying to get my eyes to align and see clearly on the same thing at the same time. And she was like, well, what kind were you wearing? 
and, and I told her what I thought that that, or I remembered them to be. And she said, well, like that's my specialty, multifocal contact lenses is my specialty. If I can't get you into the correct type, no one can. And I was like, okay, so I'm gonna try this kind, which are hands down, they're the best. And we'll see how you do. I put them on and I mean, it's always an adjustment when you stick you know, a piece of plastic on your eyeball. I've been wearing them for maybe an hour now. Immediately putting them on, I could see everything like far away, clearly. Both eyes seeing the same shit at the same time, clearly. So I told her, I said, you know, all right, well already it's a plus because I'm seeing clear and they are, you know, I mean, they, they are kind of bugging me a little bit, but you know, that's just because I have more contacts in a while, especially in both eyes at the same time. She said, okay, well, that's good. She said, it takes like 10 days for your eyes to get used to things. So I have an appointment, a follow up appointment in two weeks. I gotta say, after wearing them for an hour, they're already not bothering me. I already don't feel like I have contacts in, other than the fact that I can see clearly at everything at the same time. And I'm not blinking a thousand times and so on and so forth. So I ordered the glasses, you know, I had already had my frame picked out. So I went in and I did that. And you know, with my insurance, it's one or the other. They either pay for the glasses or they pay for contacts. The woman said, it's always better to let the insurance pay for the glasses because they cover more and it, it's actually better, it's a better value, which means I'm gonna be paying for my contacts out of pocket if I decide to get them. If these continue to work, as well as they are now and they only get better and I can actually see all the close-up shit just as well, then I don't mind paying out of pocket to get the contacts. In fact, I pretty much did the last time. It cost me a grand. I don't think that it makes a difference getting them in the daily contacts. It's not like, well, shit, I wore glasses today. Now I got to throw that pair of contacts away because I didn't use them for the day. No, it doesn't matter. They're unopened. It's not like they expire, but for now, I'm pretty happy with the, the outcome of the appointment. My eyes are healthy, look great, and all that kind of stuff. And the glasses are ordered, and they should be in two, you know, within, what she said, within two weeks. And my appointment's in two weeks, my follow-up appointment. So we'll see how that all goes, and, and then I'll have to decide if I want to spring for an entire year, because it's going to be expensive, which sucks. You know, it's, it's not like I'm going to shit out $1,000, but uh, you got to do what you got to do. So that's all I've got for you today. I wanted you to think, ponder on the fact that, that we live in a magical time and that we should appreciate it a little more than maybe I show. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them down below. As always, thank you for joining me. Be sure to like and subscribe. And remember, kids, forward nub.